Many people seem to worry that when they get their paychecks here in Finland, everything goes down the crapper because it's too expensive here. But don't worry because I'm here to help you guys today by sharing you 10 practical tips on how to save money here in Finland. Let's go check it out. What up Fintastics, welcome to another video. In case you're here for the first time, welcome. My name is Alex and I run the best channel about Finnish culture, lifestyle and language. So if you're into those kind of things, make sure to subscribe. And let's kick off things with tip number one and that is shop at the supermarkets. Because if you end up going to the grocery stores or the convenience stores, which are usually smaller, they usually tend to have higher prices. So instead of going to these smaller grocery stores and convenience stores like Alepa, go to places like Prisma, Lil, Supermar K Supermarket and S Markets instead. And my personal favorite out of this is of course Lidl, the German, German chain, because they offer the best price quality ratio in my opinion. So whenever you do the big grocery shoppings for the week, do them always at the bigger markets. And a few pro tips as well. When you're looking at the price tags, make sure to look at the kilogram price because that's actually the real price that you will get. Let me give you an example. Let's say you, you buy, for example, ketchup. There's a smaller bottle and a bigger bottle. But usually the bigger bottles have smaller kilogram price. So even if you pay a little bit higher price up front, you will get more value out of it because you have more content with less kilogram price or smaller kilogram price. Another pro tip is to keep an eye on the discounts. For example, Lidl always runs weekly discounts for many things. So make sure to keep an eye, keep an eye on them. They are usually displayed with these like big red price tags so you can easily spot them. These other markets also have their discounts, so make sure to use them. Let's keep going with the tip number two, and that is use the discount sales when buying clothes. Because when you're going to the clothes stores, you might see that the price can be a little bit high for you. But that's why you should always shop when they have the discounts. Because for example, after Christmas, there's huge discount sales, especially for clothes, up to 50 and 70%. So that's the time when you should buy clothes if necessary. For example, I rarely shop clothes and I usually buy something only on the discount sales because that's how you can save some good money. And you can utilize these discounts not only for clothes. For example, we also have Black Friday and Cyber Monday for electronics in, I think it's in uh, November, yeah. And for example, Socos, the clothes chains have this three plus one campaigns regularly. I think they run them twice a week. And also Stockman runs this whole look private, which means crazy days. And they have also a lot of interesting stuff. So keep an eye on these discounts and you can save a big penny out there. And the next tip I want to share to you is to use the flea markets for clothes. Because you don't always need to buy brand new clothes necessarily. And you can actually find some pretty good deals and discoveries on flea markets and secondhand stores. I personally don't really use secondhand stores or flea markets, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't use them. And there's, for example, a lot of these chains, these secondhand chains like FIDA and UFF or UFF. And then you can also find these local flea markets, for example, Hietsun Kirpis in Helsinki, Relove in Helsinki, and so on. And usually every city has some flea markets. So make sure to check them out and see what kind of finds you can get there. Next tip I want to share is the apartment location. Because obviously the places and apartments in the city center have higher rents than the ones outside of the city center. So can you get the convenience of being close without buying higher rents? Absolutely. And the answer is to get a place which is a little bit further away from the center but is next to the public transportation lines like metro or the local trains in Helsinki. For example, I live here in Kallio, the trendy hipster area, and I pay around 800 euros, well, it's actually ex exactly 800 euros, for my 23 square meter flat, which is kind of small, but it's fine for me. You can, for example, get an apartment in Matinkula, which is located in Espo, a, 33, a 32 square meter place, with 750 euros, so it's actually 50 euros cheaper and 10 square meters bigger than my place. So this is the idea. If you don't really need to have to be in the city center, consider getting a place a little bit further away, but make sure it's next to the public transportation, because if it's not, then it's just gonna get really inconvenient. For example, if you have to travel to work to the city center and back, then it's, you're gonna have to spend a lot of time in commuting. But getting a place next to the public transportation places can be a good way to spend, uh, not spend, earn some money and save some money. But also keep in mind that when, if you do this, you also have to count in the costs for the public transportation. For example, the basic monthly ticket here in Helsinki for public transportation unlimited use costs around 60 euros. So make sure to factor that in when you are making the calculation. 
By the way, is this video being helpful so far? If, if, you, if it does, make sure to give me one of these. The next tip I want to share you is to cook yourself. Because if you've been watching this channel, you probably know that dining out here in Finland is quite expensive. And I don't really recommend to do that as a habit. Because going, for example, for a dinner in a restaurant here in Helsinki can easily cost more than 20 euros. So that's not going to be really cost effective. But instead what you can do is just to shop at Lidl, get some good groceries like potatoes, rice, meat, chicken, whatever, some salads and stuff. And when you cook at home, you can get a meal as cheap as 1.5 euro a meal. So make sure to do that and don't use the restaurants because uh, unless you have like a really special case of like a birthday or, or st things like this, because that's gonna be a huge hole to your wallet if you dine out here in Finland, especially here in Helsinki. And the next tip I wanna share is avoid those lunch buffets. Because if you watch the previous video, I can link it out here when I share my costs of living. I usually go to these lunch buffets and they're actually quite good if you think about it. Around 10 euros, 10.50 euro, 10 here in, in Helsinki, you get the lunch buffet, which is actually a pretty good meal. I mean, it's like healthy and stuff and you can eat as much as you want. But they cost like 10, around 10 euros a time. And if you do it like five times a week, that's 50 euros a week. And if you have 22 working days, that can be easily 200 euros a month. So again, if you believe in your cooking skills, you can make some packed lunch for yourself. You can save pretty good money, like hundreds of euros a month, if you just make the lunches for yourself at home and then just bring them to work and you have them there, a boo. Personally, I always go for the lunch buffets because there's a few reasons. One, it saves me time. Two, it makes me full because I'm a big dude. I also work out, so I actually need to get good meals which make me full. So that's not something I'm willing to give up. But if you are, then this is a good way to save some money. And the tip number seven is don't get a car. Like driving in Finland in general is actually quite okay. The conditions are fine and so on. And the prices of the cars, I guess they're kind of decent. I don't know, I don't own a car myself. But the thing that's gonna make the make it very tough for your wallet is the maintenance costs. For example, spare parts, the inspections, the gasoline, the taxes. That's gonna be very expensive, but if you have the chance to survive and you know live without the car, don't get it because it's it's just, it's just completely unnecessary and very liable. It's gonna be a, it's a really big liability for your wallet. I mean, if you need it for your work or you have like you don't really have other means of transportation, then obviously car might be something you really need. But if you don't need the car, don't get it. Don't get it, believe me. Here in Helsinki, the public transportation kicks ass. So I can just use that in, in if, if I need and I save a big penny by not having a car. The next tip I have for you is getting a bicycle. Because here in Finland, the bicycle conditions are actually really good in the cities. Here in Helsinki, they kick ass. I believe in Tampere as well. So if your distances are quite reasonable, consider just getting a bicycle and using that. It's not only healthy for you and your wallet, but also for the environment. And in Finland, there's no parking fees for bicycles. You can actually leave it pretty much anywhere. Just use, common, just use common sense though. And I personally have my own bicycle as well, because I live here in Kallio. City center is pretty close where my workplace is also, so I can use bicycle to get there in 10 minutes one way. So that's pretty good for me. So consider this one as well. And this next tip is kind of like a joker, kind of bonus one, and that is save and invest money. This is one of the things that make rich people rich because they spend less money and the money that they save, they invest and save. Did you know that Finnish people are actually very bad at spending money? For example, there was some statistics by Findikaattori and I believe in 2019, the saving rate, or the average saving rate for Finnish people is 0.4%, which means that Finnish people pretty much spend everything that they earn. And that's kind of alarming, isn't it? And in the past, it has been even negative, which means that Finnish people spend more than they earn. Very, very alarming. In addition, most of the Finns that actually save, they just keep it on their bank account. And do you know why that's risky? It's because the inflation. So inflation basically means that the prices are getting higher and the value of the money is decreasing. So basically you're just losing money by just having your money on the bank account and not doing anything for it. 
anything about it, I guess. It doesn't actually matter whether you're in Finland or in your home country, you should start putting aside some money and invest and save it. Another thing here is the compound interest. Basically it means just like interest on interest. And here you can see like a quick graph, what happens if you invest $1,000 with a 20% interest, how it's gonna increase over the time with, because of the compound interest. And this is what you should also consider when you are budgeting and managing your money. And if you're already in Finland, how can you actually start doing this? It's just by through your local bank. So maybe you have OP, Nordea, Sasta, Monkey, whatever. All these banks offer ways to invest. Basically, you just need to open an Arvo Osustili, which I think translates to Progrids account or like book entry account. And through that, you can start invest on stocks, bonds, funds, equity, ETFs. There's a lot of things you can do. And it's not about like how much you earn, but how much you spend and save. For example, if you earn 5,000 euros a month, that's a good, really good money. But if you also spend 5,000 euros a month, then you're pretty much left with nothing, nothing to save. But then again, if you earn, let's say 2,500 euros and you save 500 euros every month, that's gonna be around 6,000 6, euros yearly. And with the compound interest over time, you're gonna make actually some good money, ideally. And you can actually automate this. For example, what I've done is that, because I get my salary on the first day of the month, I automatically put on that day around five, 600 euros a month to savings and investing. And that's good because you first save and then you spend. Because if you first spend and blah, 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 and at the end you want to invest and then you realize, oh shit, I actually spend all the money. I don't have any, anything to put aside and that's bad. So make sure to do it at the every beginning, beginning of the month. And the tip number 10 is like, don't be too harsh with your financial decisions. Because if you try to save as much as you can, then life can get really gonna tough. In, 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 in certain ways. So for example, I said that don't go to restaurants because it's expensive, but for example, you can go once a month to have like a really nice dinner in a restaurant, that's fine. But don't make these bad habits. And for example, I don't give up the lunch buffets because I feel they are just, they, they are very important for me. So this comes down to you and yourself. What things you are ready to give up, which, are, which you don't, and then just make some finances, financial decisions based on that. And in the last video, I shared my monthly living costs here in Helsinki. If you want to check that video, do it here and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.